And he goes, what if I blow you? He goes, besides what you think in Hollywood, we're not all, like, gay, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, what about if he blows me while you watch him jerk off? And he's like, okay, well, we'll do that. <laughs> and so when when Bob goes down and he knocks the security guard out and Bob comes, Silent Bob comes back up and goes, you nasty fuck, you really going to suck my dick? You used to disgusting. And he shakes his head no, then looks at the camera and goes like, yeah, I was. <laughs> my sister lost her shit. She was laughing so hard and I was laughing because I'm like, did she just get the joke or is she laughing because he broke the fourth wall? Because you remember seeing yeah. a movie break the fourth wall for the first time? You're like, this is genius. Why doesn't everyone do it? Yeah. And then you watch a few other ones like, oh, not everyone can pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so that's why I like watching movies with not rated R movies. That sounds bad. Yeah. But just any movie, just to see what they find funny. Yeah. What makes them hooked on to it do they rec- do they feel more connected to the little sister because they have an older sibling or are they the older sibling and feel like they have to protect their younger sibling mm-hmm. I th- think it's neat it's one of the fun things about watching movies that you've seen before because you get to watch the person watching it yeah. who's never seen it before yeah and it's it's a, it's a new experience for them So because you've already experienced yeah. this a hundred times and for anybody yeah. to see something they haven't seen before, it's like, oh my god, that's so good. And you're like... Watching like the new <laughs> interpretation live. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what people who don't understand... Like, you watch a movie more than once? Like, why would you want to watch it with me? I don't think they understand. Yeah. Like, it's it's a different experience. It's like, well, I love it so much I want to share it. But then yeah. I also want to see you experience it. Yeah. So it's neat. The, the movie magic's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I had the same thing with... Uh, like I can say not to get away from the movie, but um, like if you're gonna like recommend, like I recommended to one of my homegirls in high school, uh, Drop Dead Fred, dude, <laughs> and she never seen it before, but I've seen it like eight or like seven different times, and when she watched it, she's like, "Oh my fucking god, I love this movie, dude," and she still like posts stuff about it every day. It goes to show like that magic of like, yo, like this person loved that so much, it's became like a part of their life. Yeah. in a weird like hey but that's what happens to people dude like people like certain things and maybe she maybe she relates to it because she did have that imaginary friend like who knows <laughs> like, like, it could be that personal like I relate maybe. to it I like Phoebe Cates <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like it's same thing with Hocus Pocus if we go back to that like maybe people could relate to these witches not that they kill people that were children and shit but like they're just witches dude they laugh and say crazy shit like I don't know <laughs> yeah no it made my girlfriend want to know what it would be like to have sisters she has three brothers oh I have two uh-huh. dude and yeah so she was like, like this movie dude well like I wonder which one I would be or like if I had a sister but, like, it was kind of funny seeing that it was neat I like that I like that shit do you guys have a uh favorite character oh Sarah Jessica Parker but you know what I remember her being more boy crazy than she was in the movie and that's my mind like just making it I thought she was more like ooh like always boy crazy yeah (laughs) it's yeah I think I was like damn like I I do agree with that I thought she was like more boy crazy in in this it's funny because her name is Sarah in the movie too yeah Sarah Sanderson but uh, no, like from what I remembered, I thought she was more boy crazy. Like that's what I liked about her character so much. She's like, ooh, she was basically what's her name from um, Murdered Children, Christina mm-hmm. Applegate's character. Oh, the daughter. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I. That it, she wasn't nearly that much. She was like she was making out with the mummy one time. Yeah. And the bus driver. She didn't make out the bus driver, but she, she was didn't. Like, but she but was they were all over the bus driver. Yeah. I only count her interactions. That's a funny inside joke when he's like, he makes reference to like having kids with him. Oh, he's like, yeah, it's, he's like, it's, it's take me a couple tries. But, <laughs> but I think we can make a dope. <laughs> yeah. Party pooper. And then I liked, uh, what's her name? The the non big one of the three sisters. You said her name earlier, I'm trying to memorize it. But she's a very much a character actress. Um, Katie Miller? No, no, uh, not Bed Midler. Uh, uh, Mary Sanderson. Kathy Najimy. Yeah, yeah, she was, she was great. Like, like when I see her, this is the character I remember her for. Doesn't matter whatever she's in. This is only, and her just like 
always mumbling right after Bette Midler's character saying the same thing. She's like the nervous, clumsy one. Yeah, it's yeah. funny because um, the way that they ride their brooms is like in character as well. She mm-hmm. has like the vacuum and shit. Yeah, and then like Sarah Jessica Parker just wraps her legs around that thing and lays all over it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty neat. But yeah, she's. I think she's underrated in this film too because she's a very she's a huge part. Yeah. Of the three sisters, and she uh, she, was she kills like, it. The comedic. The comedic relief in this one. Yeah. Does she really sing? Do we know? I don't know. Yeah, because she does the. She puts a trance on everyone. Yeah, right? but I don't yeah, think. But she like I don't know. It's just it, when you look up the movie, it, it's the song that's representing the movie. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but that's I don't know if she's saying that 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 part, dude. We should gotta look into that. James would have had it figured out by now. But you I know. don't think so, dude. It might, it might not be. I don't think so. It doesn't sound like Sarah J, though. Like, honestly, does it? Well, they were, like, background singers. It was mostly Bette Midler that yeah. was singing. So, I don't know. It's interesting. But, like, I think she deserves some credit for them. She was good. Anyone else? Favorite character? Everybody picking Sarah? No, mine, I, I would say mine is, uh, Salem. I Max. like the, when he turned into a cat, I, I know... He, he would he came like different of course because he lived like 300 years as a cat <laughs> but I, I like that character I don't know why he had to be more dramatic because oh, he is from more dramatic time Binks. so that was yeah. probably harder to act he made me want a talking cat <laughs> nice <laughs> going Max <laughs> he gets run over and they're like all sad yeah. and he's like why are you guys sad <laughs> told you I can't die <laughs> And then I mean, that made and me think, also, like, was he ripped apart by a dog at any point in his 300 years? How pro- horrible he, would that be? He he must have underwent so much yeah. fucked up shit. The dog became nothing to that guy. He lived for 300 years. <laughs> the most fucked up shit in time. Like, until what? Present day, basically? Like, almost? Like, uh, without the cell phone? Yeah, that's I wonder like. if the next one's gonna, re- like, have cell phones in it. That's gonna be... Weird. Yeah, or, they, they I have know. to. Yeah, it's it'll be contemporary. Good because this one, like the one this this original one, was contemporary for when it came out. Yeah, it was like had everything that we had back then, so it would make sense that they would do the same thing for this. It's easier too to do one of these things with a cell phone now because they could always write it as like, oh, this is people trying to make a. A viral video, so yeah. no one's gonna take the video serious or anything. They're like gonna that. be like, "Oh, these are witches." Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. They go, hey, "Well, there's Jesus over that, there." Look, that would be interesting if they bring some of the original um, cast back. It'd be huh. awesome. Like, I would love if it's the younger daughter, her kids. Ooh, you could bring her back as a mom. Yeah, I heard that the the all three of the witches they want to come back. I don't know. You can't do it without them. Yeah. They're the only ones you have to get back. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Honestly, you know, the to talk about the movie, I, I kind of snooze sometimes on the other characters' parts. I don't know why. But, like, when they come on, I, like, wake up again. And I'm like, oh, maybe I, I'm not that old, but, like, I just snooze. <laughs> like, so, but, like, their their parts are so, like, good. I don't know why. They just they're, make you, like, they're so theatrical. Stay into, yeah. I agree. Yeah, so they, yeah, don't do it without them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not worth it. You're gonna ruin the name. Just like they are gonna do this. Don't do it. I put a spell on you without Betty Miller. <laughs> don't yeah. you know? and she's not doing anything. She has to come back. I heard they've been doing like some parodies and stuff. Uh, I don't know that to raise money for people in need and stuff. I think like once every now and then one of them will dress up as her character. Didn't do something, but I don't think they ever done anything all three together. So like, that'd be legendary, dude. That's like a big alley oop that maybe people didn't want it, but if it did happen, they wouldn't complain. Yeah. You said Max, right? Yeah. Diego. I want to say his facial expressions in this one were epic, especially <laughs> like him, like like wide eyed. <laughs> what did you say, Max? Yabos. <laughs> Max yeah, likes Yavos. Dude, when he gets his Nikes, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. dude, put some sick Nikes. Oh, like, by Ice. Sneakers. He got stolen both by Ice, uh-huh. dude. Those are my favorite characters also. The little bullies, dude, those, 
not to like that I stand up for bullying, but they they played a good Disney bully <laughs> for like a '93 movie. Okay. They're just cheese balls, dude. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, the uh, the guy with the blonde hair, he just reminded me of like a villain in Point Break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got any bugs? Yeah. <laughs> You see Anthony Kiedis is in Point Break? Yeah, yeah. he's like, see, we're talking about a waste of time. <laughs> the overacting of hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think Flea's in it too, isn't he? It's like when they're, we're at the beach, right? Yeah. I can't remember. Really. But Anthony Kiedis was the group, was a part of the... They fight. Like, part of the red. fight. Yeah. yeah. They fight, you kill him in the, in the fucking shower thing. I fucking love that movie. They break his surfboard or something, right? Yeah. And Patrick Swayze comes in and helps out. Patrick Swayze is fucking badass in that. He's always a badass, but in that Which movie, is streaming on uh, HBO Max. Yeah. Oh, I own it, so who cares? Uh, so, <laughs> so we talked about sneakers as Nike's getting jacked. Yeah. I'm taking it off topic, but there's a new show on Netflix that everyone must watch. Watch. Well, watch. It's called Sneakerheads. And it's about guys who are like deep involved in sneakers. Just loves them. Waits in line for them flips them it's a scripted show there's only eight episodes but it is great and the guy the main character has been out of the scene for five years he's waiting in line to get these sneakers that are very important to him and his friend who used to do this with him comes up to him he goes i missed you in half moon bay missed you by a week in fiji he starts quoting point break (laughs) and instantly i'm like this is the best fucking show ever (laughs) i loved it it was a fun show so sneakerheads as backdoor wreck <laughs> backdoor wreck nice but yeah Max's character is really um really his facial expressions really caught on to me um he told his story with his body more than uh, yeah. more than his um dialogue which I always love because I am a wrestling fan and usually wrestling you have to tell stuff um your story with your uh, facial and body you expressions. You would love theater. I do. But, because that's that's when you get a theater actor in movies. They're very yeah. big in gestures. So, yeah, you would love theater. I'm not big into musicals, but I do love theater. <sighs> musicals are amazing. You try to sing and dance through your life, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Did you say you're a favorite character, Wes? Uh, no, I think it would be Billy Butcher's Butcher's in? Really in Butcher? Mm-hmm. Billy, Billy the Butcher. butcher. Yeah. yeah, he was cool. Um, he walked a little weird. You know who that is? I know, I did at the time. I don't remember now. Yeah, see, it says Billy Butcher's in. Yeah. In the credit. I know. I know this, the boys were in right. and That's what they talked about earlier. <laughs> it's, uh, Do you know what a callback a, is? It's, actually, it's a yes, joke, like yes. moving on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not when it's at my expense, buddy. <laughs> Um, that is actually Doug Jones. I believe this was his first film. Was it really? Yeah, Doug Jones uh, was the fawn in Pan's Labyrinth, longtime Guillermo del Toro uh, collaborator. He's on Star Trek um, Into not Into Darkness, Discovery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, he must have been super young in that one. Yeah. Can you imagine like looking into being tall and weirdly skinny? Yeah, and I saw him in friends. real life. He really does. Yeah, he's yeah. like super lanky, and, but he's super amazingly nice, dude. He's a good actor too. But he's like he's great in the Star Trek show on CBS. Mm-hmm. He's, he's in was he's in Hellboy, Shape of Water, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of stuff. Abraham Sapien or something like that. Have you guys seen the Buffy the Vampire Slayer the series? You know the with the the mime dudes. No, the, I watched Angel. But do, have you guys no no one seen Buffy? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it in a minute, dude. No, oh. you guys remember like the monsters that don't talk? Yeah, that was Doug Jones, like the main mm-hmm. or whatever. So he's been around for quite a while. That'd be a tough um, headshot to do. Like, what do you do? Your characters? You wouldn't do your face. You mean for like a con? No, for him. For him to get a job. Oh, I like guess. Yeah, hmm. you would have to work with special effect artist to know hey we got a good model that can pull this off and then from there you get your rep that'd be a tough one those are the careers I would like to see documentaries about Mm -hmm. how they got started and took off because those are odd ones and that there's jobs for definitely unsung heroes 
This is true. What else, guys? Any uh, favorite scenes? Anything stand out about this? I talked about it when the cat went, <gasps> What? And he got all shocked. <laughs> the scene. Uh, I think one scene that stood out was uh, 